There has been a support mentality that has been running rampant in the game, growing more and more, and that's the only damage support strategy. And while I do fundamentally agree with many of the things it teaches you, I do think that in some ways, some players are taking it too far. So let's talk about damaging as a support. Should you do it? Should you stop? What is the correct answer? Let's break it all down, but do me a solid and smash the like and subscribe if you enjoy this content, and let's jump into the video. Now, I want to make it clear that I'm not calling out any creator at all. I just noticed a rising trend in all of my coaching clients, and this is something that I wanted to address. So initially, supports were primarily called healers, because that was a big part of their job, to heal. But going into Overwatch 2, there has been a big push to change that term to support. And the reason is because healing is only a really small factor or small job out of the many jobs of a support player. And if you call them a healer, it almost kind of reinforces something that they shouldn't be doing 100% of the time. So that was the original push. And then we're seeing a push even further than that, which is the mentality that you shouldn't really even be healing any at all or only when there's nothing else to do and you should mainly be doing damage like support is just a damage dealer that has some extra utility and a little bit of healing but you're not even going to really use that most of the time now, ultimately, it's more of a spectrum than anything, right? On one side, it's absolute healing and no damage. And the other side is a lot of damage and proactive abilities and almost no healing, if not any healing, right? And the reality of it is, if you go all the way to the damage only side, you're way more impactful on that side than you are on the all healing side. And I know that that seems kind of strange, but it really comes down to the fact that going into Overwatch 2, especially healing is just a lot weaker than it used to be. One less tank that also has more damage mitigation and two supports that can heal themselves if they don't take damage after a set amount of time means that there's more than enough heals to go around. And in addition to that, without the bodyguard role that was the off tank before, taking an aggressive off angle is more powerful than ever, meaning that DPS are going to be on off angles and flanks a lot more and damage is how you can test these characters. If a DPS is on an off angle just shooting at your team and you're just healing nonstop, you're not getting that Hanzo off that angle so that person is just going to perpetually take pot shots uninterrupted and that's another reason why damage dealing is so damn important and especially coming from overwatch one there's a lot of supports that had success in overwatch one that are taking those preconceived notions and actually taking them into overwatch two when they are really actually overloading on the amount of healing that they should be doing and they're not relying on damage as much and so the mentality that you should just damage 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 100 percent of the time that mentality is really, really good at ripping away those bad habits, ripping away all of that problematic play style where someone is like, oh, I'm just going to play support so I don't have to be aggressive or I'm just going to heal. I'm just going to help my team. That's not your job as a support. Doing these things is something that you can do, but I would say it's a really small part of what the entire job of a support is. Now, once we establish that, though, you need to understand that just maxing out the damage all the time is actually not the best way to play. It's limiting what is possible for your impact. And the reason that that is, is because the less and less you heal, right, the less and less both of the supports heal, the more and more valuable a little bit of healing becomes. There's a ratio here. When your entire team is actually really full on health and everyone's healthy and everyone's fine, healing does very, very little. And if you had a character that could only heal, it would be terrible. But if everyone is critical, 1 HP, all doing aggressive things, all needing sustain to enable their plays, healing becomes more and more valuable. This means that, yes, damage dealing is amazing, but there are going to be moments, and a lot of moments, in fact, where healing is actually incredibly impactful. And to add on to that, and this is a super important point, oftentimes, times as a support you want to double dip in the same play that you are making or that is being made upon you as an example if your genji is going in for a nano blade you're an ana and you nano the genji this is not a time when you want to pivot to doing something super super defensive oftentimes you want to double down on that aggressive play by pushing up maybe dealing damage to help your genji throwing an aggressive nade because all of these things are going to force action force cooldowns that are going to help the blade be more successful you're double downing on that aggressive play right but in the same vein if you get dove on by a whole bunch of people 
and you're really weak or your team is really weak and you are that same Ana, oftentimes you want to use a defensive sleep, a defensive nade, pocket your team and sustain. The idea here is that purely living, playing defensive and healing up your team, making sure that no one dies or hits a break point is enough to get value because it denies all the plays that your opponents were making. And in that way, you're using your entire kit to double down on a defensive play, a support or a healer play. Now, I do understand that trying to find a happy median here is not as exciting and not as hype as trying to go one way or the other. And in a world without nuance, dealing damage 24-7 is definitely the way to go. But if you add nuance into the picture, I would say the reality is somewhere between the 50 and the doing damage all the time. So between 50% and 100% on that side of the spectrum where you're still healing way, way, way less than you're probably doing right now because you're getting huge diminishing returns on the amount of healing that you're doing. But at the same time, you're not completely neglecting people that need healing. You're not neglecting your teammates that are making proactive plays being in great positions where a little bit of healing goes a long way and the reason that i kind of wanted to pick this entire concept up as a whole is i recently have had coaching clients come and i've never seen this before where they are just literally only dps supports like they'll heal every once in a while but they're doing it so much so to the point where they're neglecting a lot of the free value that they could be getting just by spending a couple seconds helping enable teammates that need it helping prevent deaths of teammates or helping a teammate that is in a very proactive angle sustain that angle and I know that these cases are going to be few and far between, and I don't want this video to be something that people use to justify them heal body, because I have preached so much against heal body. It is an abomination. I'm just kidding, but it's really bad to heal bot because, like I said, you're getting value out of some of that heal, but really most of it, you're getting very little value relative to the time that you're spending on it and the resources that you're spending on it. And another thing that I really want to make clear is that I am a DPS support myself. I've always considered myself a very aggressive DPS support. Even back in Overwatch 1 when I was a top 500 support, I was someone that always did more damage, probably than I should. And I definitely got flamed a lot for it. And I do understand the power that embracing a damage-based playstyle can bring. Because I feel like it carried me to a high rank. Oftentimes, I was just playing third DPS and uh, it was super, super strong. But I'm also not going to treat my audience and the people that I coach as people that are incapable of learning the nuance of the game. If you want to really embrace the game, understand it from a higher level, maybe scrim, climb the ranks, you can't just look at everything in a black and white manner. And, and while that can be very helpful for you when you're first learning the game, when you have core concepts that you're just completely missing, as you become more and more knowledgeable with the game, as you try to expand your game sense, it's important important to start to see the gray in compositions and play patterns and tips and tricks and the meta as a whole. And I do understand that in a lot of my videos, I talk about best this, big this, bad mistake, but these are just tools to use as stepping stones to develop yourself fully as someone who thinks about the game more critically and understands those gray areas. And I thought I would make this video to kind of shine light onto this whole situation, and I hope that you learned something, but yeah, definitely let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. Smash that like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you next time.